Hello, hello, hello. I hope that gave me and all of you enough time to hop on Facebook Live if you aren't on your Facebook Live and you're just here with us on Zoom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Fran Edwards. And I am Tanya Brown. And we are two educators who were trying to sexy it up and step away from the <laughs> textbook and the research and we decided <laughs> So we would um, do a virtual beauty bar. Um, this was another one of Tanya's great ideas. She was like, let's do something different. Let's mix it up. Um, and so we're so excited to have so many men and women of great faith, um, people that Tanya and I have known for a very long time to join us to talk about beauty, health, fitness. Um, and these folks have some amazing stories. And so we're glad that you're on with us tonight the chat. Um, for those of you who didn't register, hi, Facebook Live uh, family. Um, so let's, let's just get started. We're ready to have a good time and to learn a lot from all of our wonderful guests. Um, so Tanya, take it away. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Virtual Beauty Bar, holding it down during COVID-19. We truly appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to hang with us for about an hour. Many people have asked us so often, how do Fran and Tanya know each other? What are they doing? Um, many people know us in academia slash higher education because we were always presenting at conferences together. But Fran and I go way back to the early 90s when she was a television producer at Black Entertainment Television for the amazing show Team Summit and I was a posse member. And Fran took me under her wings and she's been mentoring me and coaching me and dragging me along as her little sister for these past two decades. So it's just really a pleasure to share this space with each of you tonight, our esteemed panelists, those of you who are on Facebook Live, welcome. So we're gonna get it started. And I want you to join me in welcoming Monique Pryor. Monique Pryor is the Chief of Staff at St. Francis College in Brooklyn, New York. Season 16 contestant on Amazing Race, marathoner, wife and mother of two beautiful teenage girls. She is one of my best friends who I had the pleasure of meeting during my freshman year of college at Hofstra University while she was a law school student at Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. So good evening, Monique. Thank you for being with us all the way from Jersey. Hey, my sisters, how are you doing? It's so, I'm so excited to be here. Hey, Fran. How are you, Monique? I'm fine. And joining Monique to talk to us about health and fitness is one of my JMU friends, a fitness coach and business mentor and nutrition portion fit certified, Davida Chapman. And she shared with me that she got started on this fitness during when she was in her 40s and she's totally not looking like she's anywhere near her 40s but she was struggling with you know maintaining that weight as we age you know becomes more challenging and she decided as a college athlete that she was going to take control of her life and she got certified and so she's now a certified coach um, and a mentor and we're so glad that I reached out to her there were several times that I reached out to her on Instagram like help me please help me please how do you stay so committed like every single day getting up and I watch her videos and I try to do some of the things. Um, but my life is such that I have not been able to maintain that commitment, but I'm so glad you're here because your ability to maintain that commitment is gonna be a blessing when you share that with all of us this evening. So thank both of you for joining us. So let's talk thank with you. you. All Good right. Evening. So Monique, give us your one minute overview on how you started running marathons. One minute. Okay, so I was a sprinter in high school. Um, my father's a track coach, but I had never uh, built up the endurance to be a long distance runner and always wanted to, but just didn't have the time or thought I didn't have the time. I'm, you know, I'm a mother of two, I'm a wife, I work. 
And so I was just tired of hearing those same old stories in my head that I can't do. I've always worked out even when I had the kids. Um, and so that was, you know, I belonged to gyms and actually Tanya, when she got certified in spin, I was like, well, I'm gonna get certified in spin. And so we've kind of gone back and forth with each other with that. But um, I think I was at a point in my life, my career, my family that uh, my kids were growing up and sometimes you, you know, God says surrender and you're not in control. And, and there was one thing that I, I just felt like I could control, I could control my exercise routine, I could reach a goal. And so I decided that the one thing I could control at that time was my fitness. And I decided that I would take up uh, long distance running. And so I just built myself up to, when I got up to six miles, I said, I can, I can do a half marathon. So that's the first thing that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So what specifically motivated you to run a marathon all the way in Paris and how would you describe that experience compared to the New York City Marathon in 2019? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. Um, so I did the Brooklyn Half Marathon uh, a couple of years ago and when, when I started the training and running. And when I completed that, I said, wow, I can, it made me just feel like I can do anything outside of running. You know, when you would dedicate yourself to something, it made me know that I could achieve anything. And I knew how hard it was to get into the New York Marathon and a number of my <clears throat> friends had did it. And I've always dared myself to be different. Mm -hmm. so why don't I do something different and run a marathon in a place that I had never been? And I've always wanted to go to Paris. So I chose the Paris Marathon. Um, and the difference between those mar two marathons are huge, um, both in a positive and, and, and learning experience. One, uh, my brother was supposed to run with me in Paris, um, him and his wife, often inspired me in running. So in some of the pictures you see I'm with them, they're 10 years my junior, right? So, um, so I was keeping up with them. They were sometimes keeping up with me. But in Paris, my brother was supposed to go with me. He couldn't go at the last minute. I happened to run into a friend um, and we, we were both running the Paris Marathon. So in Paris, Paris is nothing like the New York City Marathon. They didn't tell me that until the day before. There are no people lining the streets uh, in the thousands and the tens of thousands like there are in New York City. So the cheering was not there or anything like that. And my loved ones were not there. And so, but I, I relish in the fact that I was there with a friend of mine. I met many Paris, uh, people from Paris while I was there. So it was just a joyous thing to come to see all these people around the world come together, speaking different languages. Whereas a New York City marathon, the crowd just fuels you. My family <laughs> My friends watch and, and my kids and my husband met me on several different parts of the yeah. group. The college I work for, um, the students volunteer at a certain, uh, at mile 11. So I saw all my students and some of my oh, coworkers. So nice. those type of things keep you going. Wonderful. And what is your training regimen when preparing for a marathon? And how do you balance all your different roles? Working, marriage, motherhood, community involvement? I'm sure Davida, uh, you know, gives this advice to some of her uh, her friends and and her and her clients because it, you know it is a balancing act and you you must you know take care of your mental health and as well as your physical physical health. So because I was working a lot, um, I decided to train in the morning. I mean, I'm a morning person, and even the days that I could not, like I would lay there for the count to twenty. Okay, one, two. You're gonna get up at 19, and it's dark outside. <laughs> right. And I just, you know, I was just determined to fulfill this dream of mine to make it happen. So I train in the morning um, every, you know, I would run about three, four times a week and do my long runs on the weekend. And so by the time I got home from work, I could still pour in to my family and the kids. And what were your tips? I wanted to ask Davida a quick question to bring her in. As a college athlete, the rigor of sometimes two a days and all of those things um, that you're used to in terms of training, when that gets lost, how hard is it to get back? Because like Monique just said, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're a businesswoman. How hard is it to get all of that back? And then tell us your story about um, just venturing into the, the certification and the coaching world. Absolutely. You know, when, like I said, I hit my late forties and you know, you. You kind of get that middle age weight, um, and when I was like, I was a college athlete. I know what to do to get this weight off, but 
you know, the motivation, you know, wasn't there as much as it is when you're physically competing, you know, on a, on a high level, on an elite level at college. So um, my story begins with, I was following a friend of mine on Instagram. Same thing, like you follow me on Instagram and I would see her get up every day, um, you know, do her workout via the stream. And, you know, it looked like she was just having a great time. And, you know, I reached out to her and I'm like, what is it that you're doing? And, you know, she shared with me that, you know, she does accountability groups and challenge groups and, you know, does her work from home. And, you know, I am such a competitive person that, you know, I'm like, I can do that too. And so, you know, just like Monique said, you know, I really try to balance out my day where, you know, I have to set my alarm at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning so I can get up. And that's the time that I can control. I can control that time for me. And I know that my kids are still asleep. Um, my phone's not going off. You know, my email is not dinging. So, and I make that time for me. And as a competitive athlete, and, you know, I just have that motivation, that internal motivation that, that gets me up every morning and, and you know, to, to, to work out. I think Tanya and I are doing it wrong because we get up every morning and we go right here and start checking email, trying to get ahead of the curve. And then we'll talk throughout the day and we'll talk about, well, we're, we're not snacking, we're going to work out, we're going to work out. <laughs> but, um, you know, right. it's hard. It's hard. It is hard. And you know what? The My non-negotiable is getting up every day and working out. Mm -hmm. That's a non-negotiable to me. And, you know, what, where the magic really happens with people is being a part of a community and accountability group and where you're tied in with other women with the same goals to, um, you know, be successful in their health and fitness journey. I mean, really where the rubber meets the road is those accountability groups that I facilitate um, every day. You know, women, they check in daily and, you know, they post sweaty selfies, they share workouts and, you know, they just motivate, they support and they encourage. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, an awesome tip for women who are really trying to start it with their health and fitness journey. Mm -hmm. You know, connect with others, join an accountability group and be a part of a community that just helps support you and encourages you. That's such a good point, David, if I could just jump in here. When I was training for the New York Marathon, um, some mothers in the community, and we live in small towns in New Jersey, so it's about four different towns, and this mother has started training she's into fitness so she started training some of her friends for free in her basement and so she started and now she has her own business she has her own studio it's called bra but um she got us all together like three times a week and developed this co competition among us called triple threat and i'm sure davida's heard of this app it's called endo mondo uh um by um uh, Under Armour. And that's, that's where we created a community. And so we all were friends on that and you could log your workouts. And sometimes the apps you are working on, whether it's your, I, I, your uh, iPhone watch, your watch will connect to it and automatically upload your workout. So I see, you know, Tanya just, you know, walked six miles and we get certain points <laughs> that. We get certain points for if your heart rate is up, she can see all of that. I'm like, oh, I got to I got to get out there. And I could just look on the app, even if I don't have a chance to talk to her. Like Davida said, we've created a community. So there are apps out there that you can do with your friends. Let me ask you this though, and I've seen since, you know, we've been in this pandemic state, there's been tons of folks, some will offer free training or coaching sessions, some are offering paid, maybe one or two sessions free and then you pay to continue. What is your best advice for folks in terms of choosing some sort of virtual engagement if they're going to start a health and fitness journey or should they, you know, wait till gyms reopen? What is the best bet and how you discern a good coach from someone who may very well just be, you know, an opportunist during this time. 
Uh, I can jump in, Davida, and real quick. So uh, I do have a personal trainer. I have, I did get a personal trainer when I started uh, working out and um, training for the marathon. That was important to me to build out that muscle. And I still have him today. Um, but when COVID hit, I had to stop. And then he started training me and my daughter. So it's a chance for me and my daughters to bond. We train virtually. And if you have, if you're blessed and, and have the means, I definitely, and I know Davida probably feels that way. I, I wanted to give back and make some of these trainers, this is, you know, they're working at three, four different gyms. And even the gym I spoke about earlier, Brawl, um, they were offering free sessions, but you could donate to help the trainers. And so we would do, we do virtual sessions, but we have an opportunity to pay them virtually. And other trainers, interestingly, interestingly enough, who belong to train at gyms and don't make that much money are now finding their entrepreneurial spirit and doing virtual training. If you're the best trainer at a gym, you get paid the same amount as the worst trainer. And now they've started groups as well. So, but there are a lot of uh, YouTube videos out there. I've been training with Lily 30 days free training, which is awesome um, as well. And then virtually with my, my other trainer. I think to piggyback on what Monique said, because um, I do get my workouts in France. <laughs> Better than and, I do. Um, I, as Monique said, we both are certified spinning instructors, and I have a spinning bike, and I use an app called spinning.com to use, to, to follow spinning workouts, and I even go old school. I mean, I'll pop in a spinning DVD. But in terms of what I think is trusted, I try to use what the mainstream gyms offer. So that would be Les Mills, Peloton, Spinning, like trusted companies that we know that the instructors are certified and they really know what they're doing. And we're not gonna injure ourselves when we're at home. Absolutely. What did you share? And you know, I do the same thing. I'm connected with Beachbody. Mm -hmm. uh, Beachbody owns They've got super trainers that you can just press A and you follow exactly what they're doing. They're demonstrating the moves. And there's a variety of things out there that you can do. Um, you know, fitness apps, um, you know, streaming live. And again, you need to look for somebody who offers value to you and what you're looking for. And, you know, when the COVID-19 thing just start started I offered free zoom workouts to anyone who wanted to join me and I'd get on zoom at eight o'clock in the morning nine o'clock in the morning and we'd stream workouts and we'd do it together because you know it's 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 a stressful time you know uncertainty going on and you know I just wanted to offer help to women who gyms were closed, you know, didn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so I offered that, you know, I offered value. But if you're looking for something to long term, you know, always look for something that offers nutrition, mm -hmm. offers fitness, and support of a community, because you really need all three to be successful in that health and fitness journey, because it is a lifelong journey. Davida, you mentioned nutrition. What are your favorite nutrition tips? Well, one is being prepared. Um, you know, meal prepping, make sure that you're not prepping your meals, but you also prep your snacks. Um, you know, take the guesswork out of what you're going to eat all day. Um, you know, schedule it in your phone, you know, two to three hours um, apart from each other. It's time to eat. Um, you know, make sure that you're hydrated. You know, always drink, you know, a lot of water. So, um, you know, I tend to eat the same things over and over again. I do too. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, what, what works for me, I know what works for my body, but, you know, make sure that you're, you're cleaning up that grocery list. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not buying things that, you know, are processed foods. Um, you know, and everybody pretty much knows what's, you know, good to eat. Your fresh foods, your fresh vegetables and fruits and those sort of things. But 
really just being prepared is half the battle. Um, it really is the battle. Right, <laughs> so, right, right, right. Exactly. You know, being prepared and meal prepping, and it doesn't take that long. Thank you so much, Davida and Monique, for being here with us. We're going to um, come back to you all during our Q&A, and you'll be able to interact with our audience live, and we know that they'll have questions for you. So if you are just joining us, please type your questions in the chat or in the Q&A session, and Monique and Davida will join us during the Q&A. So now, um, again, thank you. That was, you know, I'm going to get back on the regimen. To, to be totally clear, I do have a husband who kicks my butt and makes me Yes, out, and you run. Crazy hours. And, and you run, run for it all the time. In my face, because that's the only time. I think like Davida said, I have to make this my thing that's a deal breaker. I have to get committed to getting up in the morning and checking in with my body as opposed to checking yes. in with, my, you know, emails and everything and all that kind of stuff. But thank you. I can't wait to bring them back to hear the engagement and what our folks on the line have to say. Absolutely. But right now, I'm so excited to introduce my former boss and good friend, Mama Sita. So Sita Lewis uh, began her career as a TV producer, producing everything from the nationally award-winning Teen Summit. Hey! Um, she was a BET <laughs> news producer. She produced Heart and Soul. Um, she also works outside of BT producing shows like the Ananda Lewis show, the Bethany Frankel show, and she even has dabbled into reality TV producing Love and Hip Hop New York. But her journey to launching her skincare line is so amazing, and that's why she's here with us this evening. Please welcome, welcome, welcome. Cedar Lewis, you see all those beautiful products behind you. Thank you. Yes, welcome, Cedar. Thank you for having me, ladies. It's just oh my gosh, see everybody's face. Fran, first of all, I never really saw myself as your boss. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you came in on the scene and took over. Do no, you, I didn't. Do you remember that? Okay, <laughs> I was just a good producer um, learning from the best. Listen, I, I learned from the best. I am still implementing processes that Fran put in place. Back Absolutely. In okay. She's always in charge. See that she's always in charge. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, you know, you gotta have a plan. <laughs> and, and what's crazy is what I'm doing right now, I, I didn't really have a plan for this. If I had to, if I had to tell somebody five years ago from now, what will you be doing in five years? I hope to have my own business, but I thought that it was going to be in the culinary world because that's where I was kind of trying to drive myself towards. I started, like Fran said, I was producing TV and then I started producing the food segments on the Bethany Frankel show. So all my culinary passions came out. And Fran, you remember I used to cook back yes. in the days. Listen, this one right here, you know, the best tuna salad in the world, the okay. best. Talk no, about my husband's not listening, but yes. Today, I have it upstairs in the fridge right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to pursue the culinary dream that I had, which was to either own my own restaurant, have a food truck. I'm real handy with my hands. And so it, everything kind of evolved for me. You know, one job led to another job. I was consulting at a restaurant help. And I felt like they were giving to me by allowing me to be in the restaurant and to help kind of like take over their menu and look at how they're uh, running their kitchen and get everything under control. Um, and then I started teaching culinary classes and production classes at a high school um, in Manhattan called Harlem Children's Zone. And that's where things started to change for me. I went and competed on the Food Network, on Food Network Star. I was a part yes. of the show. Yes. And mm -hmm. I still had that culinary dream. And before you know it, I was introducing um, a home skincare product that I used to make for myself because I didn't trust, I barely trust other people's cooking. And, I, and a lot <laughs> of people don't trust the products that are in the stores. So I, I was concocting my own all natural products and I had some students that had really terrible eczema. And I said, mm -hmm. you know what guys, we're not gonna cook this week a, a recipe, we're gonna cook something else. So I had the school order a bunch of the ingredients, mango butter, cocoa butter, shea butter, things that I knew that the students could 
could get their hands on those natural resources with no problem. And after I'm long gone, they can make this product for themselves because we know that when we buy name brand products, we're paying for the brands, we're paying for the packaging, we're paying for all the stuff that goes into putting that product together. But I wanted to teach them there's a way you can get rid of this eczema by putting these products together yourself. So I, you know, brought in all the ingredients and we made about 300 jars. We gave them away as Christmas gifts. And it just seemed like the next step was just like history in the making. Everybody's eczema cleared up. My, my supervisor at work, Alex, he was, oh, Sita, this is, I have allergies so bad. And this product cleared up, you know, my skin. Um, I've tried every a dermatologist um, prescribed, prescribed medication and cream that they've ever given me and it didn't work. And finally, he, he was encouraging me. Then some of you know Diva Newman. I went to, uh, Diva Newman was a, is a TV producer uh, for Viacom right now, but we were producer colleagues back in the day. And she and I shared a room at Martha's Vineyard in 2016. And she said, Sita, whatever you have in this little candle jar that you're sharing with us, you need to put this stuff out. This stuff is amazing. What is it? What do you do? So, you know, to explain what I do uh, is I cold press some of the ingredients that I just named, mango butter, very um, nutritious and nourishing, moisturizing and hydrating to the skin, um, shea butter, which everybody loves shea butter. That's a soft butter. And I have cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is known for its vitamin um, rich nutrients. It also helps to fade dark marks. So I said, you know, why don't we just put all this together? But how do you put it together um, and you don't heat it? You don't melt it down. You don't cause it to lose its nutritional value. So I came up with a process where I cold pressed it together. And once it's cold pressed together and I have a little sample here, you it comes out in this here. creamy form and it's 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 not like a hard butter anymore but the minute that it touches your skin it melts on contact with your skin and then it comes in 16 different scents so if you like people cream if you like mango if you like vanilla i started with two scents vanilla and citrus and then it turned into lemongrass and then it was grapefruit and then it was coconut lime. And then I started, you know, playing and dabbling with different exotic oils. And I created this, um, this all natural uh, liquid oil for because some people just prefer liquid oil for hydrating their skin, like when they get out of the shower and things like that. And this became one of my top, top sellers. And it, it evolves. I, you know, basically set up the business by going online I created my own website, the website that I have today that I've sold, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of product. I, that's the same website that I use right now. So this is something that people can do at home. People can take whatever their passion is. And there's so many tools and opportunities for us now with, you know, like Zoom meetings and different things that we can do. Um, so I created my own website. I started working with a graphic artist. I've been working with the same graphic artist for three years now, and I've never heard his voice, never heard the man's voice, but yet in the film, he, he created every graphic that you see according to my standards. So everything had to be done virtually uh, by way of typing on email and different things like that. And now I'm in a place where I have like six different products. I have a men's line coming out with a men's beard oil. I have a men's a beard and hair wash for men. So that's going to be released right in time for Father's Day. Oh, um, me up. Go ahead and put me on auto order for that. I got you, man. <laughs> so, exactly. He's refusing to cut the beard now. He loves it. Yeah, it's everybody's wearing beards now. It's crazy. And this is so hydrating and so nourishing for the beard. And so... And that's the thing. I even have like a beard comb, you know, cause men are really into grooming and they were calling me saying, Tita, what do you have for men? I said, you guys, everything I have is for men and women and children. Mm -hmm. He's like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? But you know, men, they have to, you have to market something to them, put it in black packaging, tell them that it's especially for them. I have women who love my, my men's products. You know, they haven't come out yet, but they've just been tested. 
um, on, you know, my, my guinea pig friends <laughs> who had, who loved the product. So I ended up having to quit my job, my television career of like 18 years to pursue this. And right now I'm able to make a living probably a little bit more lucrative than things were when I was in the TV business. So I so see that how can we for you to, to make that leap? Because everyone that's on with us today is a small business owner. So how scary was it for you to go from that security of having, you know, benefits in that job? How scary was it? And what was the thing that just said, I'm going to do this? It was very scary. The, I started the business. I launched it March of 2017. And I quit my job by July of 2017. So that's only five months later. And what happened was, I was nervous. I wouldn't just quit the job and do this full time. But when the orders started rolling in to the point where I, I couldn't hardly keep up with it. I mean, like my job was in the way. And once you're able to make enough money to sustain your living, you have to then step out on faith. The school year had ended. So I would have had to make a choice to go back and teach the next semester coming up or make this the end of that contract. And I prayed about it and, you know, and I'm a faithful person. You've known me, Fran, for 30 years, okay? <laughs> so you know that anything that I put my mind to, I really have to touch and agree um, with God. And I have, to, I have to feel like I'm hearing something from God. And, and, and God, in, in so many words, spoke to me and let me know, you, you just do what I'm telling you to do. And a good friend of mine, gave me some words of um, inspiration. And he said, when God says go, he's not sending you, he's taking you. And then he asked me, what does that mean to you? And I said, it means that God is taking me like I'm holding his hand. And he literally has put me through every step of this game. My product went from me making one amount in 2017, it doubled in 2018, it doubled again in 2019, and now my numbers are already on track to double for 2020, even in the midst of the pandemic, because people are home taking care of their skin, which right. is one thing. So Sita, how can we get your products? How can we order them? How can we get in touch with you? So I have a lab that's rolling and right through this pandemic. We, I have an assistant that works full time with me now. Everything is online. We ship within two days. So that's all people have to do is go to miraclebuttercream.com, scroll through the products. Everything is described in extreme detail. Cause I, you know, I learned from Fran Tolliver. Well, Tolliver Edwards, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know her as Fran Tolliver. Now she's Dr. Edwards. <laughs> but everything is um, specifically laid out in detail. What I have to offer, you put your offer in, put your credit card or your PayPal or however. And okay. if you have questions about the product, you can email me, Mama Cita at Miracle Buttercream. It's on the website. Uh, all the information is there. I answer all my emails. I give a handwritten note to all of my customers. I put a little postcard in the package. I think it's really important to say thank you to the people who are spending their hard earned money on you when they can always choose someone else. So I'm, I'm really grateful where God is bringing it. And I know that I'm gonna outgrow this lab that I'm in now and have to have you know, a bigger production uh, facility. So I, I'm really thankful. Wow. Well, we are gonna be giving away some of your products. I have not opened the box downstairs yet, but these are my products. And I asked Cedar to make sure that I'm on like auto order, like, you know, every you know, 30 days or whatever, because my daughter goes into the products like this. I go in like <laughs> very gently, you know, because it is, you know, a, yes, little, I think little, a, little, a little dab will do. Um, but I, I'm so inspired by you. And, you know, I've watched your career as a TV producer. I've watched you as a friend. I have taken spiritual advice from you. Um, and have applied it to my life. And so we're so glad that you took time out to spend a little bit of time with us. So just stick around. I'm sure folks are going to have questions for you. Um, so we're going to put you back in our waiting room. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Love you thank you, Sita. Love you too, Tanya. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Tanya, who do we have up next? 
What's going on? We have hair, hair that which we're seeing all over. Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. So Natalie let's bring in to the rescue. <laughs> let's bring in celebrity hairstylist Natalie Wong Sang. It is truly a pleasure for me to introduce our next panelist, Natalie Wong Sang, who has. <laughs> 20 years of experience as a master and celebrity hairstylist in the Washington, D.C. area. Today, she is a Victoria Station Salon and Spa top master stylist and color specialist. Her work has been featured in magazines such as Elle, People, Essence, D.C. Modern Luxury, and Hairstyles. She currently has a contract with the Bravo TV series, Real Housewives of Potomac. She has been a celebrity hairstylist to the stars for Monique Samuels, Stacey Dash, Laura Evans, Katie Tour, Ashley Peterson, Jacqueline Sawyer, to name a few. Good evening, Natalie, and welcome. Hi, guys. Hey, hello. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> so, Natalie, let's jump right into this. All we see on social media is folks talking about hair. I sent you a text message to try to you know, uh, see if, if you could help me out because I need some hair assistance, but you said <laughs> your industry is different, so you are not going to violate any rules. So what should we be doing at home to maintain our hair since we can't get to the salon? That is a great question. I mean, as you can imagine, I've had clients text me every single day. I've heard from them <laughs> a second that this shut down because I have weekly clients. I have bi-weekly clients, you know. Um, I mean, my number one advice to people is give your hair freedom. Be free. Don't blow dry. Don't apply heat. You know, I mean, this is our time to really give our hair a break. I mean, I've even given my hair a break. I I didn't comb my hair for three weeks. Like, I, I, I'll just be honest with everyone. Like, and for a hairdresser, like that's heaven on earth, okay? Like I just let my hair be natural, threw some leave-in conditioner in it. I've been doing treatments every week. I, I've been recommending my clients to do protein treatments, leave-in, I mean, um, deep conditioners, um, hot oil treatments. Um, this is the time to even try products, you know? Like a lot of my clients have been you know, when you want to really trial a product and you never have the time because they're like, what if my hair comes out really bad? Um, this is the time because we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, I have been giving recommendations as far as, you know, conditioners, protein treatments, all that stuff. Um, but it, it's like, I'm trying to tell people not to color their hair either, please. Um, Cause that's going to make my job a lot harder when we get back into the salon um, and make, and cost you more money. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to save both of us, trying to save your right. pocket and my time. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so what are some affordable hair products? So let's talk about different categories. So what are some affordable hair products that we can either purchase online or the local drugstore for natural hair, processed hair, colored hair, just help us out. So Honestly, like, I think what I've realized over the last couple of years is that um, if you're, whether you're natural or relaxed, a lot of these products kind of go hand in hand together today. Um, they, they used to be more separate, but I feel like they're, they're creating products that basically work whether you're natural or you're relaxed. Some of my favorite products um, on the market that are really affordable are Design Essentials. Okay. I love the Design Essential line. They have a brand new um, almond and avocado line that I love. Uh, their oat and protein and their peppermint shampoo are phenomenal. They have an almond butter and stim, um, stimulations conditioner that I love. Um, everything is affordable. There may be like $10 each. Um, okay. uh, Shea Moisture is also one of my favorite product lines that's very affordable. My favorite product lines by Shea Moisture are the um, Jamaican Black Castor Oil line as well as the Manuka Honey and uh, Mafura oil line as well. Okay. That's like literal favorite. Um, you can get all of this stuff at Target. Uh, I don't know if they sell it at Walmart too, but Target is the hookup for sure. Okay. Target, um, Amazon. Amazon, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Myel Organics is kind of one of my newer favorite lines. Uh, they have a phenomenal rosemary mint line that's really great for um, any type of damaged or overprocessed hair. It, um, you know, one of the most important things is uh, that I want that I try to tell my clients is you need to clarify first and then moisturize after. 
Um, so that's for my natural and process. As far as color treated hair, one of my favorite lines is Moroccan oil. Moroccan oil has a great hydrating uh, line. And then Olaplex, I don't know if you guys have heard of Olaplex. Olaplex is one of my absolute favorites. It's kind of new. They have a phenomenal treatment, but they just came out with a shampoo and conditioner. That's phenomenal. Um, then Paul Mitchell is kind of like one of my kind of classic favorites. Paul Mitchell has a few classics that I just feel like they're, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Their tea tree shampoo is hands mm -hmm. down one of my absolute favorites that, mm -hmm. that's able. Um, and then one of my other favorite lines for color treatments is a line called Lanza. Um, they have some really great moisture lines for color that I love. And they have color preserving shampoos that are amazing that could work with any hair type, which I'm all about. Natalie, you have to send us all of those products. I will. I will. I absolutely <laughs> will. And I think the most important thing, whether it's for natural, relaxed, colored, is that you're doing sulfate free, paraben free. Those type of things are really important today. So no matter what type of hair you have, you should be getting shampoos that don't have those in them. So Natalie, okay. following at home, should they be trying to cut their own hair? Should they try to color their own hair or, or what should they do or what what things have you seen people doing at home that are causing more damage than doing good um I, I mean I have seen some people try to color their own hair which hasn't gone over so well um I would not recommend cutting your own hair I've seen some crazy stuff on Facebook and Instagram I can't even begin to tell you but most people are waiting most people are waiting I don't feel like they're that brave to try to do something like that. Um, I think um, what I am really impressed with is I'm watching people do a lot of natural protective styles to themselves, um, which I love. I love that people are really exploring their own hair. Your hair, both of you, your hair looks beautiful. I'm loving that people are trying to, I mean, I'm impressed because I'm like, I can't do that to myself. <laughs> so, um, you know, I feel like people are really kind of taking that break. You know, I mean, people are struggling. I'm not going to not gonna say that they're not. But um, I think that people are still kind of just giving their hair that break that you need. Everybody's hair needs a break. Mm -hmm. You know? Natalie, you have been appointed as a global brand ambassador and educator for Cocoa Hair Pro. What makes these hair products unique and how can we purchase them? So actually, Coco Hair Pro is a hair tool company. Mm -hmm. um, we are the, um, we're the first tool company. It's a Korean engineering company with the um, first, art, first infrared heat technology on the market. Um, so we offer a blow dryer that offers dual heat. Our blow dryer offers dry heat and moisturized heat. At, like you can switch it on and off and there's no other dryer on the market that can do that. We have the first flat iron on the market that does not have metal. Metal is what burns your hair. That's what causes heat damage. So right now it's kind of really expensive because it's, you gotta think about it like when the first flat screen TV came out, right? Um, nobody has this technology yet. So it's, it's, it's slowly gonna integrate into our industry but I'm so excited about it because I mean, for us, I mean, that's something that we've dealt with for so long is, is heat damage. So I'm so excited to have a tool that will no longer create any type of heat damage for my clients. Um, and then we also have, we do have one product. I'm going to bring it on the screen. Um, it's our hair perfecting serum, which is like, this is like, the, this is crack, y'all. This is like Jesus serum. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm just gonna say that out loud. I, I use it on any and every hair type. And even for my, my natural clients, especially, I mean, it's an all-in-one product. It gives you moisture, shine, it protects against humidity and frizz. It's paraben-free, sulfate-free. Um, your hair will be bouncing and behaving. It's, a, it, it's amazing. So all of our stuff is available on cocohairpro.com. And I have my own promo code that will get you 20% off on anything, which is my Instagram name, Natalie's Love for Hair. I'll make sure I'll send all of you guys that just in case anybody wants to make any purchases. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Fran? 
I can't wait because um, I know a lot of our guests, we have lots of questions populating. I can't wait to hear what they have to ask you. I know they have tons of questions because that's, I think that's been people's biggest challenge is to leave their hair alone or to figure out what to do with it. Right. Yeah. Understood. My weekly clients don't know what to do because they don't do their own hair. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, it's been tough. <laughs> well, thank you, Natalie. We're thank you, Natalie. Thank we'll you. Bring you back up for the Q&A. Okay, sounds All great. Right. We are going to turn to the face now. We're going to bring in Derek Rutledge and Mercedes Jeter. Come on in, guys. Did I click on that thing? Oh, yeah, I think I did. All right. There we go. Derek, come on in. Hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. Hey, Derek. Hey, Derek. You? Well, our, turn, unmute your mic, or do I need to do that? Let me unmute you, Derek. He's on mute. Okay. I unmuted him, and Mercedes, I think you're good. So our next guest, um, Derek Rutledge, has the pleasure of creating artistry on faces like Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey. Um, he is the creator of the Perfecting Your Presence Masterclass series. He is a native Washingtonian. He is a brother of deep faith. He is a giver and a caretaker. Um, and I have to plug Sam Fine's two-part interview with Derek Rutledge. If you have not seen that, when this is over, jump over to Instagram, follow Sam Fine and Derek Rutledge, and please watch the interview. You're going to be typing in the chat room, this needs to be a movie, this needs to be a book. He is phenomenal. So Derek, I am so honored and so blessed um, that my BET fam came to hang out with Tanya and I tonight. So we're so glad to have you here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm happy you all brought me on. Oh. And I am so excited to welcome my very own makeup artist who I have worked with since 2017, Mercedes Jeter. Mercedes is a graduate of American University at Trinity University in Washington, DC. In 2008, Mercedes began her makeup career with MAC Cosmetics. She currently works with the Evening News at Team News 4, corporate clients, brides, Kathy Hughes, and a host of other celebrities. Please welcome Mercedes Jeter. Thank you for having me. Hey, hey. I'm so glad to have both of you guys on with us. So real quick, Derek, I know you're probably not going to be able to do this, but I want both of you to give us your one minute how I got started story. Okay, oh. like two minutes. <laughs> well, first of all, that's not fair because I mean, with Sam, it was two hours. You asked me for two hours. Time minute. block with Sam. <laughs> okay, um, one minute. Um, college, BET was a, a pivotal part of my my life. Um, for there for five years, that's how I got to meet quite a few of the celebrities that I work with now. Um, from BET to my to two years, two and a half years at the White House. And then the last 10 years of my life have been with um, Oprah Winfrey um, as her personal makeup artist. I mean, you said a minute. I, that's a very, very, very condensed. What'd you say? We, we, got, we got to make sure people hop off and look at your standby interview. Well, as a matter of fact, what I've been doing while you all were actually um, conversing with other people was I've been answering a lot of messages. And because so many people missed it, um, I'm actually posting it tonight. So after they get off of here, they can actually go to my Instagram site and I'm and I am actually posting part one today and I'm part, posting part two tomorrow so that people can, you know, have time to take it in and because it's deep. It's, it's very deep. I want people to understand that this um, road to stardom was not easy. And, uh, you know, everything that I, everything that the other ladies are talking about is as far as exercise and hair and all these things play, played a pivotal part in where I am now. And um, I opened up and I was frank about everything that I encountered along the way. And he brought it out of me. As a matter of fact, when I finished the interview, I had a little breakdown myself because I woo hard and released a lot of things that I needed to get out. So. Well, I watched the uh, second part and I tell you, thank you so much for sharing. We're not going to go back and watch the first part. 
Let's bring Mercedes in. First part of Beyond right after you finish. Give us your one minute how you got started. Um, I've always loved uh, beauty. I've always uh, been interested in it, but um, it really started because I was a bored housewife at one point. Um, <laughs> I, I could make it sound sweeter, but that's kind of really what happened. Um, I was uh, in my master's program at Trinity and I needed something to do. School was burning me out. Um, I was pregnant with my second child. I already had, you know, a three-year-old running around. So I just wanted to do something fun. Um, and that's when I applied for Mac and I got in. And it's been, it's been me and makeup ever since. <laughs> cool. I love it. Um, I know, so Derek, you started when there was I don't even know if there was even Yahoo when we were at BET. There probably wasn't even Yahoo. No, it was AOL. It was AOL. <laughs> AOL. <laughs> yeah, it was AOL when I when I got started at BET when I was working with um, the um, Screen Scene and um, Planet Groove and working with um, working with every flagship show that they had there on the network. Even I would come in on Saturdays and sometimes work with them. Um, um, Teen Summit. So that's how, you know, we got to meet yeah. um, back way back then. And, and comparing the two of you, Mercedes, you're, you're out here in a world where there's nothing but some professionals, some would-be, some self-trained makeup artists that are doing tutorials and that have huge followings. Two of you who are trained and skilled in this area, what sets you apart um, and what advice would what advice would you give to those folks out here um, who look for makeup advice, who look for you know skincare advice and things of that nature? I'm gonna uh, <laughs> I guess defer to Derek. Um, I wanna <laughs> I mean honestly, um, in that sense, I guess it's more so just the way I build my relationships with people. Um, I really want to have meaningful conversations with clients um, to put them at ease, but also um, build that trust that they know that I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, that I'm going to give them the look that they're looking for without taking them too much outside of their comfort zone if that's not what they're ready for. Um, so I really, my, I guess what sets me apart, what I'll say is definitely relationship building. Um, for me, uh, I go after, I, I look for, um, well, people come to me, you know, they, they come to me because they, they've heard what a, what they've heard about my reputation. They know that I am, I got a big, a huge heart where I love to help people. I love to help women, especially that, that um, struggle with their look. Um, because I come in with not just giving you makeup uh, tips, but I come in giving you a whole beauty regime. You know, um, I let you know that if you, I can get, I can find the beauty that's locked within your, your lock within you, not only your face, but I have, you know, I can refer someone to get your hair done. I have someone that actually can get your image together. So that's why I come with a full, a, a, I consider myself a beauty expert, not just a makeup artist. So I actually go after women that and, and encourage them to work from the inside out. That's why I said your exercise um, gurus that are here on are here today um, is perfect because we need to work from the inside out. Um, a person who has struggled with weight all their life and continuously is trying to perfect themselves um, I encourage people to work, you know, eat the right thing, work out, you know, and then all of that, you know, that makes you feel good because I'm a, I, I believe that when you, when you, when you, when you look good, when you, when you look good and you feel good, then it all comes out in the way you smile at people, the way you look at people. And, um, I, I have a lot of people, a lot of young people that gravitate towards me because they want to know 
how is it that I can become a celebrity makeup artist? And I explained to them, you don't go into this with the idea of being a celebrity makeup artist. You go into this with the love of the, of the art, with the, of the love of the craft. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I first started doing this, I loved the idea of making someone feel good about themselves by transforming them with my artistry. From that, the word of what I did started spreading around to everyone just by word of mouth. And then I clientele started building and then I was doing um, weddings and I was doing funerals and I was doing I was doing everything I could because I love the I, I love when a woman would look in the mirror and then she would tear up I say baby no 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 don't don't tear up I don't want you to mess my work up but I would like when I love when they look in the mirror and say I didn't know I could be this pretty that was fulfilling to me it wasn't necessarily the money it was the fulfillment of knowing that I made someone feel good and then my reputation just grew um, until I started getting all these requests to come in and audition for other artists as a makeup artist. And once you got me in there for an audition, you got me, you know, because I, I, my love comes through my hands, the way I speak to someone, the way I touch them. So it all plays an important pivotal, it, it's a pivotal point of how everything comes together when I get a client. Derek, you talk about the importance of looking at beauty from the inside out. And so I yeah. want to ask both of you all, we'll start with you, Derek. What are some of the challenges that African-American women often face when they're getting their makeup done? Because we're often told that we're not the standard of beauty. So how do you address that when you're working with your clients? Well, I, um, when you say the standard of beauty, what do you mean by the standard of beauty? Well, we're often told by media that white women, European women, are often the standard of beauty, not African-American women. Well, I beg to differ because okay. I do feel that uh, women of color, you know, be it um, Indian, um, Asian, uh, um, um, Hispanic, we all have very unique shades and we all mm -hmm. come in different shades mm -hmm. and we all have I consider every woman beautiful mm -hmm. so when it comes down to issues a lot of issues they have are um, hormonal issues they also mm -hmm. have issues with um, not eating the correct things because we are our, our skin is, is a result of what we take in which is why I you know I make sure that I'm um, I drink a lot of water you know, you mm -hmm. to keep my skin hydrated. Mm -hmm. I also do a lot of um, enzymes and things that I, I, essential oils. I do a lot, use a lot of products that are essential oil based because those essential oils go through the dermis and epidermis and start working on this cellular level to correct any issues that we have through the bloodstream. And then all of that that's working on the inside of us comes out on the outside of us through mm -hmm. our skins. Mm -hmm. So that's what's important. And, but the main thing is just making sure you, you eat right. You know, yes, I was a big guy and, I, and I, I can admit that. But even though I was a big guy, I realized what my issues were. It wasn't with eating the wrong thing. It was eating the wrong time of day. And it was not okay. eating small portions throughout the day. Because of my issues with my weight, I only would eat one time a day that was at night and go to bed. So I knew what my issues were. Mm -hmm. But I also know that um, I was eating a lot of them help the things that made me healthy to keep me and sustain me even at the weight that I was and mm -hmm. which is why that's my dog that's my dog if you heard someone come to the door which is why I can step you know I can stand up and say that I you know people say well how when I tell them how old I am which I stopped doing that but then you know I was just told well you need to tell us so that we can and that shock people but it's because I work very hard on on working on the inside so that the beauty on the outside shines. Thank you so much. Mercedes, what would you add to that? Um, as far as, you know, us just not being the standards of beauty, um, I disagree with that too. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, 
I grew up just surrounded by beautiful women, um, different shades of brown, different sizes, different hair textures. So it was always affirmed um, with me, with my sisters, um, friends, family, that we were beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and anybody that disagreed with that um, or tried to come in between you know, us feeling great, um, we just cancel that noise out. Mm-hmm. Um, even on social media, um, I just block it or, you know, hit see fewer posts or, you know, even if it's someone that I just found on the explore page, I just, I can't feed into that because I just can't allow someone to, um, to ruin my self-esteem because if my self-esteem is bad, then that translates to my daughter, that translates to my friends, my sisters. So I just, I really literally cancel it completely out. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, what is your most memorable or your most impactful client story? A client who impacted your life um, in a way that you didn't expect when they sat down in your chair? Hmm. Did I stop you? <laughs> yeah. Um, the most impactful um, would probably be, um, ooh, It probably would be um, Ilyasa Shabazz, Malcolm X's daughter. Um, She just is really um, a ball of encouragement. Um, You really have no choice but just to really be fortified and uplifted and encouraged when you're around her. Um, You really feel the spirit of her parents when she's in that room with you. So... Um, that's probably, yeah, I'd have to say that's my most impact. Yeah. Yeah, that's deep. I had an opportunity to meet her on campus and she can be amazing. Um, Yeah. And her presence. I mean, her physical presence. She's tall. She's statuesque. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, she's, she's A plus in my book. Fran, she was actually on Teen Summit with us as a guest show. Yeah. 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 And she was, I think she came to Delphi. Four years ago, she had written a book. Um, but again, mm-hmm. just like you said, that persona that just mm-hmm. that oozing empathy and care and concern for those around her. Yes. Yeah. So, Derek, what about you, babe? I've been sitting here pondering, <laughs> thinking about this, and I'm like, this is so unfair to give one person. <laughs> My okay. career spans 30 years. You know, and so one for I'm each thinking- decade. One for each decade. Can you do that? <laughs> Okay, Um, I can say, okay, one person that I truly love, and I actually talked with her yesterday, because I want her to come on, and I want to introduce her as a friend of mine for next month, and that's Cece Winans. I love the way, I love her spirit, I love the way she loves me, and how she will be praised for me continuously and constantly, Um, and even before we would start a makeup session, she would actually, you know, we would start it in prayer. Both she and Yolanda Adams, both, you know, sisters of mine that were, you know, a very p- spiritual. And they would always, before we would start a session, would pray. Though they, they were very impactful. Um, I can all, I can go as far back as, um, gosh, um, my family at BET, you know, um, I, um, Rachel and I, Rachel and Kathy and I, we had a very strong bond and they always encouraged me to keep my dream strong because they knew every day at four o'clock I would not miss watching Oprah Winfrey's show. And then I kept saying one day, I would love to be able to do Oprah Winfrey's makeup and here I am now doing it. Um, then we're gonna flash forward, you know, current. Um, Michelle Obama was a very pivotal uh, person in my life because when I was going through issues with my mother while she was going through chemo, she would pray for me. She would always um, uplift me because she would tell me, she would even, even talk to me, my mother, when I was worried about being there and worried, worried about my mother be going through chemo right up into Oprah for my past 10 years, being there when she would speak with so many spiritual leaders and having those impactful discussions that I would listen to and take away a lot of um, 
knowledge from those um, messages that they would give her. So I, I, could, I couldn't pinpoint one, but all of those were very important times and people that have impacted my life. You guys have had the opportunity to work with some amazing, amazing yes. people. Um, thank you guys for taking part in that little interview segment. We're going to keep you guys here. We're going to bring everybody else back because there's like- Thank you. Thank, thank you guys thank you. so much. Thank you. Um, let's see. We're bringing everybody back in. And Tanya, we're going to try to do this Q&A. Everybody- All right, Q&A. let's do it, Fran. <laughs> let's do it. You should have logged on to my account too, so you can run. Um, you know, I do have to go back and show these two pictures though, because we made like little collages for everyone, and I got to go and I got to share the screen because we put all this time and effort. I got to show Cedas. I was so busy listening to Cita and Natalie, I forgot to click the button to show um, <laughs> their collages. Now I can't even. Okay, here I go. I'm going to share the screen. See, Tanya, we need to have a producer that um, does this part for us. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is a lot. All right, I'm Fran, well, you, you are the producer extraordinaire, so I know you're going to do a good job. Listen, so, there, so this is, that's Mercedes, and her handle is there. That's Derek, and his handles are there. This is Natalie, and her handles are there with her beautiful clients. This is Mama Sita. See, I didn't know you were in the Tamron Hall show. I'm a huge Tamron Hall fan. And as you can see in the picture right here, um, Sita has given away uh, her products. She's put them in swag bags for awards, for the Urban uh, Honors Awards. Um, <coughs> and Davida, I made a little video because I was looking at this. I was getting inspired. I saw this video. I snatched it off of your Instagram. You doing this workout. Like, I want to just get in there and just, oh, oh, just get up. You're motivating me. I'm going to get up and work out. I'm going to make that my you know, non-negotiable, as you said. Good. Um, and then here we have our um, <laughs> marathon <laughs> runner. Yes, um, Monique. Wonderful. And I don't even think that we may mention that you were on the amazing race, right, Monique? Yeah. I don't think we mentioned that, that you were on the amazing race. So yeah. I'm going to stop sharing because people hopped on to be able to talk to you all. And it's so cool. Just they get to talk to you all. There's no upselling of anything. They just get to engage. And hopefully, folks out there, if I bring you in live, hopefully your faces be and your hair looks good so you can ask a question. <laughs> everybody on this webinar is looking fabulous. I'm looking at Derek and Mercedes' skin. I'm like, oh my God, it's flawless. Um, so let's see. I'm just going to go down. I'm going to pop Carla on live. Carla, are you with us? Carla. I clicked live. Let's see. Let me go in here. Carla Eugene, I'm going to allow you to talk. And if I click on you guys and you don't want to talk, you don't have to um, open your camera. But Carla, you can ask um, your question of our guest. Are you with us, Carla? Well, I will ask her question. She says, what are the best products for 4C hair, I can't get, I can't seem to get enough moisture in my hair. So that probably you, you, so something that I actually just tapped into with some clients recently is learning what your porosity of your hair is. Learning the porosity of your hair is so important because it will actually teach you what products you need to be using in your hair. Um, A great way to test the porosity of your hair is to take a clean glass of water, take a clean strand of hair and put it in the water. And if it floats to the bottom, you have low. If it floats in the middle, you have normal. And if it floats to the top, that means you have high porosity. So um, there are targeted uh, uh, product lines for depending on your porosity. Um, Cause it really, it's not just about the 4C. It actually depends on her texture too. I mean like her, um, the the current state of her hair. So um, I don't know if that answers her question. I'm trying to see. So if so this is the thing guys that those of you that are on the call, um, if I promote you to panelists and you don't want to show us your video, you don't have to, but it allows you to be able to talk with our guests live. So thank you, Carla, for your question. And I'm gonna um 
let Tanya, Tanya, can you see the chat room in the, the q and I can see the chat. Okay, so we can go back and forth and let's try to get, uh -huh. mix up the questions. So we have fitness and hair and all that kind of stuff. We'll go back and forth. So Tanya, go ahead. All right, so let me jump all the way to Cleveland, Ohio. Fallon Peterson, we're gonna bring Fallon Peterson in live. She asked, how often should I get my ends trimmed? I have natural hair and wear protective styles through the years. Fallon, you wanna to talk to Natalie? Did you unmute her, Tyler? Uh, why am I calling you Tyler? Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> Thinking about the kids. Uh, let me find Fallon. What's her last name? Peterson. Okay. But there are a few people in here that are in here just by number. I don't see her on here. Okay. Uh, there it is. There it is. I'm going to Fallon. I just promoted you to panelist. She's going to be joining us. Are you here, Fallon? Hello. 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 How Hi. are you? Doing? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I definitely have that question. I've read different things about how long to leave, um, you should get your hair trimmed, but I always keep it in protective style. So I just don't know what to do. I, you know, I always suggest to my clients, even if you're keeping your hair in protective styles, you need to get your hair cut every three to four months. I, okay. well, they should not be surpassing four months without getting their hair trimmed. Even if you're not putting heat to it, even if it's in protective styles the whole time, because people tend to think even when you're in protective styles and in weaves that you don't need to care for your real hair, but your real hair still needs care. Um, even in between, like you gotta do treatments to it. Even if it's in a protective style of time, you still need to treat your hair in between, like love it. So it loves you back. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Great advice. You're welcome. Oh. Fallon, I'm going to keep you on. You typed another question. Derek, she asked us how long should she keep her makeup? How long should she keep her makeup? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, everything has an expiration date. Um, pencils are more forgiving because you always um, clean a, or you get a new pencil every time you sharpen it. Um, a lot of, you know, if I'm working with a client and be, with my makeup kit, then I usually um, keep mine no more than about three months because especially a liquid because a liquid can turn okay. um, because, and then you can always tell by that smell um, with creams creams last a little longer but with what's going on now with um you know sanitation you know mm -hmm. um for you as a for you as an individual you can keep it as long as you just keep it keep it clean because what ends up happening is that bacteria can start growing inside of it especially if you're using the same sponge over and over again, which is why it's important to have a clean sponge or clean brushes. Um, lipsticks can last a very long time, but as soon as they start getting that smell of waxiness um, and get hard, then you should throw them away. So it just depends on the, it actually depends on what it is, you know, that you have liquid um, foundation or, or, or lipsticks or things like that, they should, I would say every four to five months, pencils, they can last forever until um, you, you notice that they start drying up inside the case, so. Great, thank you so much. You're yes. quite welcome, thank you. You got a beautiful smile. Thank, thank you, braces. And your skin, oh, I have braces too, so I understand <laughs> your skin looks really, really pretty. Thank <laughs> you. Are you doing facials while you're home, while you can I am, so I do self-care while I'm at home. Good, that's Especially good. Especially since I have Zoom meetings for work, they pop out of nowhere. So I'll have like a mask on right oh, before. Good. <laughs> and good. I'll take it off. But I can yes, see. thank you so much. Your pores are very tight and I see that your skin is very clear. I don't see any bumps or anything. So you take, you're taking very good care of your skin. I can see that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Derek. Derek. Thank you, guys. Bye. So, Derek, I have um, some folks on. So, my C 
Tissy was like, please, I don't want to go live, but can Derek come stay with me because I've been on meetings from seven o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock every day. And so my sissy and my kids got, uh, got mommy across the street, um, Aisha. She did say um, your, your series with um, Sam Fine was all inspiring and she loves your spirit and she totally enjoyed that interview. Journey. Well, thank so, you. I appreciate that. You could that. be a book or a movie, Derek. I'm telling you. She can actually. So there's a couple of people. She can actually watch it after we finish again because I'm actually yeah. posting it. Yeah. So, Derek, you know, you, you opened a can of worms when you talked about the age. So, my roommate from undergrad wants you to answer the question. <laughs> Michelle, do you want to go live? Let me see. Yeah. You, you <laughs> want to answer the question? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Only because. <laughs> Only because, like Oprah said, Oprah said, well, damn, Derek. But now she said, damn. She said, you need to just tell people. <laughs> Go on and tell. I said, because okay, my spirit stays young and youthful because I surround myself with people like, look at that beautiful smile. Look at, we got Faith Evans here in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I surround myself by young people. Young people keep me, um, keep me youthful and keep me grounded. And they, and I, one thing I always say is I'm a constant student of everybody that I run in contact with. But on um, February 24th of this year, I turned 59. So there. Woo! Woo! You better. You Girl, have a birthday. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I just want to reach out and touch Great. I want to yeah. pinch his cheeks. Give me some of them cheeks. 59 where? <laughs> Oh, um, I, I have a question for our fitness folks. Um, so a, a fast start, you know, say for example, you get past, you know, what is this Memorial Day coming up? What is the best way to get started um, on a fitness regimen, the most manageable way to restart? Because I know a lot of folks out there, just even in my friend and family circle, have just kind of fallen off. So give us like a quick start guide to trying to get back. I mean, I don't know if we need to be getting our summer bodies because we're going to be like in our backyards, but give <laughs> us a quick start guide to trying to, you know, getting back on that horse when we fall off. Well, first of all, just remember, everybody was a beginner at one time. So, you know, you always have to start from somewhere. Second, make sure that you get your mindset right before you even start. And, you know, you can start briskly walking, start with a brisk walk, but also make sure you always incorporate some type of resistance or weight training. And you don't have to have a whole lot of equipment. You can do body weight exercises. I mean, just think about it. I mean, if I weigh 150 pounds and I'm doing squats, you're squatting 150 pounds, really. So, um, you know, your body weight can be used as your equipment. You know, like I said before, you know, you change one thing at a time. Don't try to change everything. Don't try to, you know, work out six days a week, you know, eat right and and everything all at once. Start with one thing, start small. What do you, Monique? I totally agree with you, Davida, especially walking. Now I see more people walking than ever. And for those of us dog lovers, I, you know, I know Derek has a dog. Um, and I see that there's a need out there with the dog hiding from his owners, like, leave me alone, because everybody wants to take their dogs on a walk. And so I've been walking, I've had some knee issues, but I've been walking my dog every day for an hour, which is about two and a half miles. And that goes a long way. I mean, that's the start. And you can social distance with your friends by walking, briskly walking. And the way I got started running, there's apps out there that can help you. I actually use this app called uh, Couch to 5K, and then it's a Couch to Half Marathon, where you walk, run, you build up your resistance, you walk for two minutes, then you run for a minute, and you 
constantly do that and build that up. But I would say my, my Apple Watch really keeps me on point. Like those goals, they have these three rings on your Apple Watch and you try to close them. You have to stand, I see Fran nodding. You have to stand for so many times a day, right? You have to close those rings. And one of them is an exercise ring. And so my exercise ring is closed, ladies and gentlemen by six <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Like I got it out the way and, and, and I'm, then I'm encouraged to wrap it around again. And so that keeps me really motivated and going. So if that works, if you need some extra motivation or like Davida said, do it with a friend who will keep you accountable will help. But I wanna ask the hairdressers on the call for those, I know the black women on the call wanna know how can we maintain our hair workout? I, I can tell you how many Women I have talked to said, well, I can't work out because of my hair, because of my hair, my hair is natural and I have twist and it's back <laughs> because my hair is just like this. And so I keep my hair twisted, but what are some ways that women, black women who, you know, we need to work out and I'm tired of hearing that excuse. And I'm sure Davida is who have perm natural hair. How can they maintain their hair and work out? Is that a question for me? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Faith Evans. I mean, honestly, of course, I get this question all the time. I mean, I'm natural and I work out myself, but, you know, I feel like they've started coming out with hair bands and things that you can wrap your hair up in that preserve your hair really well. Like they, I think that they've gotten so much better at this today than they were a couple years ago. Um, I know for a fact, like whenever I work out, I definitely use those sweat resistant bands. And when I take it off, my hair is dry. I mean, when I tell you it soaks it up, I mean, they work, they really work. People just need to invest in these things that they need to use when they work out because they really work. I mean, I, in, you know what, it's me, honestly, I plan my workouts kind of around my hair. It's a, it's a, it's a schedule. So like my workouts come when it's like towards the end of my hair, when I'm, you know, getting closer to the wash day, like be strategic about it. You know what I mean? Cause you know, you're not going to work out every day. I keep my workouts in the days where I know like my hair is dirty, not on like my fresh days. Those are, those are cut out. <laughs> well, thank you, Natalie. So how would we, um, we're going to jump over to Sita. Sita, how can we use your hair butter to help us to moisturize our hair and to condition our hair? Good question. So the hair butter can be used in many ways. It can be used as a hot oil treatment, which is what I do. I, I put it on like on Saturdays, I put it in my scalp. The hair butter is infused with heavy doses of rosemary oil and peppermint oil. And we know that rosemary oil helps to repair nerve damage in the hair mm -hmm. follicle. And the peppermint oil really helps to get the blood circulating in your scalp, which also helps with hair growth. So besides helping with your hair growth, you're gonna be able to put a plastic cap on it and mm -hmm. you know get those oils and butters penetrating. And once the follicles are open, all the nutrition that is in the butters and the oils can be imparted. It's almost like that product is like a fertilizer. Mm -hmm. I'm also over 50. Um, gonna keep my age to myself today but I have a lot of gray hair so I color my hair and I grew up in a beauty salon my mother owned a beauty salon um, growing up so I had experience coloring so I can color my hair at home but what I do is I take my hair butter right before I'm gonna color it and you know how back in the day they used to put Vaseline all around your edges mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. part it well I don't do that I use, I put my own butter everywhere i saturate my hair with it just to cause it to be a little bit more protective and then i start to apply the color right over top of the product okay. you know, well you know there's no petroleum in this product there's no mineral oil there's nothing that's going to block that color from oh, into your cuticle right? Dita, i need some i got it hey! <laughs> So yeah, what I'm be it's protecting your hair while you're coloring it. And then what I do is I shampoo the color out. You know, some people just rinse color out, but I, I, I rinse the color out and then I shampoo my hair. And then I put the hair butter back on as now as a penetrating conditioner after I colored it. So I know that color, no matter how you slice it, is damaging to your hair. You, you can't get around that. Um, but what you can do is just start to try to like bring it back to health 
by, you know, conditioning it and hydrating it because color, you know, dries your hair out as we know. And as you get older, your hair starts to get thin because of, you know, so many different things, hormones, mainly um, medication, just different mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then when I wear my hair in ponytails, like today, I just take a little glob, rub, rub it all together. And literally I'll, I'll put some more right now. Any of my products can be used in your hair, right? And there it is. And I just use that when we're putting those ponytails in. So while you have to have a ponytail, you might as well be adding some vitamins and minerals and nutrients to your hair. You well, know, I need to add some to my ponytail. I need to hair butter. I <laughs> about the hair butter because I am in that 50-ish age range. And I'm going through the thing that is damaging my hair. So I told Sita, um, I, I put in the protective style and put in the crochet. And I told Sita, I'm going to go on this journey. I'm going to take pictures of my hair and send it to her. So hopefully I can feel in between the braids is, is healthier. Um, I've washed my hair with the um, crochet in. And I do what you say. I slather it with the hair butter. It's so delicate. You can use mm -hmm. it. It's very very light. Hair butter, just so everybody understands that I created, has not one single man-made ingredient in it. Not even the fragrance. The fragrance is so strong because of the rose, the pure rosemary oil, which is, we know, like $500 for a gallon, you know, and when you buy those little ones from Whole Foods, they're like 10 bucks. But I don't put a little bit. I put enough where it is going to actually work. And you can put it in every single day. And I have t uh, reviews on my website, like from Kai Brown. You know Kai. Kai's hair is like down to here. Like I have so many people that are like measuring their hair and then putting a post on Instagram. And I'm and I I get excited because. You know, I just was like, I didn't know this was going to happen. Like, it's it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Janelle Snowden, I don't know if you guys know Janelle, yeah. but um, mm -hmm. she was a, a reporter for VH1 for many years. Mm -hmm. And she wore all the, the, you know, the hairstyles that you need for TV, weaves and braids and different things. And one of her braids was so tight from the weave, pulling it, that it pulled from, from on her scalp. And it caused a bald patch. And it was her and I that started talking to some herbalists, her doctor, come, come to find out there was no real formula with all of these ingredients that doctors recommended. So we said, we gonna make it. And that's where my hair butter was formulated in the first place. As soon as she started using it, uh, her hair just grew right back where it, where it had been literally pulled out in that spot. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Sita. We do have giveaways. Um, we're going to give away two uh, little prize packs of Sita's products. Um, we have to pick some folks from the chat here. Uh, but I did, I wanted to, there was a question that came up from Mercedes. It says, I love your story, Mercedes. What is the key to finding the perfect shade if you can't get out to the store to try it? So how do you find the perfect shade? Hmm. Well, a lot of companies are doing um, foundation matches online. Um, there's a company called Il Maquillage. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but they do everything online. Um, so you can go to their website. You need to take a picture of yourself. Um, you may have to give them your undertone, um, if I'm not mistaken. But they'll send you a foundation um, that fits your skin tone. So definitely look into um, the brand's um i believe lip bar the lip bar has a um component where you can get your foundation match online um nars may have something um sephora has a foundation finder so definitely utilize those online tools upload a picture um and just play around experiment you can send things back um, the return policies are very liberal now just because of the situation that we're in. Um, so yeah, take advantage of that, um, that service that we get online. Okay, a lot of people are asking, a lot of people are saying hi to all of you. Thank you. I'm going to try to go down the list of people that, that are here. Like we always do, Tanya, because we always like to recognize the folks who are here. Carla, Elmira, some people just came in with their phone numbers. Angela, hello. Hey, Angela. 
uh, Cecilia Washington, Diane, Dorian, Dr. Angela Williams, Dr. Barbara, Georgette, Helen Lewis, Aisha Brown, Jacqueline, another Jaquita, Julia Holmes, Karen Jackson, Jamie in the house, Karen Owens, Karen Wentz, woo! Uh, La Lavdina, I'm, I hope I'm saying that. Lavdina Orr. Lavdina Orr, Linda Smith Peterson, Mark Warren, Nancy Gaskin, Nikki Washington, Nikki Ham, Paige Hill, Stacey Hill, Paige Hall, Stacey Hill, Stephanie, Sunil, <laughs> Tina. Um, Tony, Victoria, Winnie, Yvette, um, those are all the people that are still hanging out. So, um, Tanya, do you want to pick two of those folks so that we can get their information to uh, send them a wonderful gift? And please make sure you guys, um, I'll make sure we make the video available so that you can follow everybody on their Instagram page and on their Facebook pages. You all have offered some super tips uh, for our guests tonight. And we said we did not want to hold you guys uh, past our hour and a half mark. And it is 8.34. We do appreciate <laughs> all of you for, for hanging out with us. Um, this has been amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, Davida, I'm going to make a promise to you and Monique that I'm going to get back on the horse and start working out, <laughs> being committed, um, and pulling myself away from trying to get ahead at work. Cause I think that's one of my biz biggest excuses. I'm trying to stay ahead um, because I have so much to do, um, but I'm gonna put my fitness and my health first. Um, I'm gonna continue with my hair butter and <laughs> report uh, with some updates on how I'm doing with that. And um, Tanya, you wanna wrap and pick some folks so we can give some prizes to? All right, so how about Dr. Barbara Collins? Ooh, Dr. Barbara Collins. Yes. And how about Dr. Dorian Thomas? All right. So those are our two winners. So Tanya, you'll reach out to them and get their addresses so we can send them. This is not what you're getting. This is mine. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. And you know what? She packages it so well. Tita makes it look so good. I have to tell you this. When I put this in my hair, Tita, I use this every other day. Yeah. I don't have to burn a candle in my house. I don't have to put on perfume. This illuminates the whole house. It just smells so good and it feels- It really, so really does. It yeah. really does. Yeah. Sita, I'm about to send you a message. <laughs> <laughs> I need a care package. Okay. <laughs> Look, everybody needs a care package, Sita. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Um, like I said in the beginning, Tanya and I have just been reveling and talking about you all for this entire week. Um, you guys are, men, like I said, men and women of great faith. You have given up your time. Um, and this is something that all of you have been committed to doing prior to a pandemic. And so we are so blessed and so grateful to have had you guys on with us tonight. You are the best. You rock. We love you and we appreciate you. We appreciate the new friends we have met. Um, and stay encouraged and stay safe. Mercedes, having us. Thank you so much. Derek, Mercedes, Davida, Thank you for having Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. are wonderful. You guys did great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you, you ladies, so much for this opportunity. All right. And I hope to meet all of you in person one day. Yes. yes. We can hug. Yes. <laughs> Everybody so stay safe. Hugging. Yes, definitely <laughs> hugging. <laughs> definitely <laughs> hugging. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.